the Browning 525 or the Breast Silver Pigeon? That is what this video is about. We're going to try and answer the questions on some of the differences. It's the main decision that most people make when they come into the shooting world and they're looking for their first gun. So, we have in front of us a Browning 525 and we have a Breast Silver Pigeon. I hope in this video to uncover some of the differences, some of the pros of each, some of the cons of each, and perhaps help you make your mind up as to what to get. So first things first, it's worth noting that actually there are many different models of Silver Pigeon, and there are many, many different models of 525. So to actually put two side by side and compare them, they have to be perfectly identical spec. I haven't done that. Uh, mostly because I don't have a 525 that matches the Silver Pigeon spec I've got here, and vice versa. But I'm going to try my best to help you sort of distinguish the main characteristics between the two. Firstly, size. So, the Browning comes out actual full action height. Sixty-eight mil. I could do it in inches if you prefer, but we're not. And the Beretta action height between barrels is 62 mil. So that's six millimeters of difference. Those are average-ish measurements. Just a quick one. So six millimeters of difference, and that six millimeters does flow all the way down the gun. You'll find on the Beretta everything is just that little bit thinner. If you look at the actual distance of the, if we measure the hand of the stock there on the Beretta, the hand of the stock is 40, and on the, Bre on the Browning is 44. That size follows all the way down the gun, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, even if we measure the barrels halfway up, on the Bre Browning is 49, The Beretta is 48. And when we're talking small amounts here, but let's say overall the whole thing is slim line. And that's why the Beretta sort of always people say oh they're smaller or lighter. That's not necessarily true that second bit will come up later. That's because they just feel a little bit smaller in the hand. They don't feel your hand quite as much. Not positive, not negative, just different. Stock length. It used to be the case, like on this Browning here, that all Brownings had a hand-finished pad on the back. Now they have an interchangeable Inflex pad, which matches very nicely the standard Beretta interchangeable pad system. It's a very similar sort of thing. So stock link isn't the sort of thing I'd worry about so much anymore. That's changeable. They'll come with spacers, different pads, all that sort of thing. So actually, that's not so much of a big issue. It used to be that Browning had a 14 and 3 quarter, and Beretta had a 14 and a half. So if you wanted something a bit longer, you started with the Browning. And if you didn't, you want to start with the Beretta. Width. Width is also different. Actual physical measurement, 39 millimeters wide. Wow, that is a surprise in itself. And the Beretta is actually 42 millimeters wide. I tell you what, I wasn't expecting that, so you're shocked as me there. But it's the depth, and the depth of the Browning still makes it feel that bit wider, but actually it is thinner. There you go, that's some amazing thing. That thinness, actually, saying that, follows into the stock. You'll find that on a stock profile, the Browning is a little bit thinner, and the Brett is a little bit fatter, and that follows all the way up from the top to the bottom. So you can end up with a slightly more refined gun, I suppose, in terms of edges with the Browning, whereas the Brett is a little bit more rounded, a little bit more trappy in the way that it is. Next. Physical size is ergo different, much deeper in the Browning, much shallower in the Beretta. So there you go. That's that's the main difference is physical size. Engineering wise. Let's move on. Let's not talk about barrels because barrels, there's different barrel options on both lengths, chokes, ribs, beads, everything is very, very different. However, they all have an equivalent for the other, so there is a there's options for everything. There is options for everything. You might have to look a little bit further back to get a fixed choke in well, either, but you know, there's many, many specifications of barrels. So we're not going to worry about the barrels so much. Both have standard top lever, manual selective trigger. You'll find with the Browning, the whole safety catch moves across. And with the Beretta, 
just there's a little selector on top of the safety catch. If we pop these off, both four ends come off the same. I said earlier about the weights, depending on the gun, brownies can weigh more, brushes can weigh more. So actually weight isn't something and a factor you should worry about. Both of them are much of muchness. Ejectors. The Beretta has sprung loaded ejectors. This does mean, we'll put it back together, I've taken it apart, that when it sits, after it's worn in a little bit, it actually sits on those springs. As you can see there, it sits there on those springs and you have to just pull it open that last bit. Not so much when they're new, but that certainly is a thing that affects them when they are. broken in a little bit. The Browning, all of the ejector springs, let's say all the actual ejector work is in the forehead here, all your springs, your kickers, everything is in there, so they are powered by a separate unit. It does mean on the barrel, they're loose, um, so they have a little bit of shape. Positives, negatives, it means they're a little bit harder to put together I suppose, because you actually have to sort of preset the ejectors so they ride into the things. Not a lot else to say about that really. They can become a little bit looser than the Brettas over time. And they do have a tendency of being expensive to replace because they're expensive to replace. Whereas the Brettas are less so. Ejector, that's, 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 that's it really. The way they lock into the barrels, guns is very different as well. With the Beretta you have these replaceable trunnions in the side that lock into these little hinges here. And that's that, and you have a top bite U-bolt in the top here. Two little log lugs there that lock the barrels into place. Whereas on the Browning, you run off a full-size hinge pin and a bottom locking bite in the bottom there. One is not necessarily better than the other, however I must say the Beretta system works a lot easier when it comes to replacing them because they're just an engineered part finish. Before I move on, this is another real key point between the two. The Browning is a much more hand finished unit than the Beretta. Positives is that it's hand finished, isn't that exciting? Negatives is that it costs a lot to replace those parts when it is comes to that point. Without sounding derogatory to either, they are both very, very good, reliable guns, but they are also both bottom of the top in terms of quality. They are unexciting finish, they are built for reliability, that's, that's what they are, they are reliable, amazingly reliable entry level, but entry level mid price range gun. The reliability of the Beretta and the ease of just popping parts in and out makes it fantastic however you do get that little bit of extra luxury with the browning in that some of the parts are hand fitted to the gun. Running costs of the Beretta are slightly lower perhaps than the browning but neither of them are going to break with any particular speed so that's not actually make that a big issue and if you have used either to the point of needing a rebuild perhaps think back over the thousands of pounds you spent on glazing cartridges or cartridges and pheasants to get you to that point and go, oh well, it doesn't actually matter, I probably deserve a new gun at this point, so a couple hundred quid on a rebuild, or a couple hundred pound more on a rebuild, isn't that bad. So, the reason the browning barrel actually, where you can see, is so deep, is because of the way it locks in. As you can see on the barrels here, you have these extended lumps, you have your hook there that hooks over your hinge pin, and they actually lock into the bottom of the gun, like that. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just the way it is. Next. Um, it's not what I was to say in terms of difference. Mechanically, actual mechanics, the bits you can't see, the bits you can't see now, the internals. And how they affect how they affect other things. Trigger pulls. Let's start with trigger pulls. Browning trigger pulls can be a touch more spongy than a Beretta. 
So it's because you have top loading sears as opposed to bottom loading sears like in the Beretta. The Beretta is a true trigger plate action, whereas the Browning is more of a odd trigger plate box lock confection design thing. Jobby. Um, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Both of them are beautiful. But it does lead when you are like pulling the trigger onto sears that are connected to the top of the gun as opposed to in line. The whole unit takes a little bit more pulling of the trigger. It's a little bit more spongy, perhaps a little bit heavier. Whereas the Bretta generally be a bit of a shorter trigger pull and certainly a little bit more crisp. I was all utterly worried about trigger pulls on a shotgun because, you know, most of us won't care. But it is something certainly to bear in mind. Something to bear in mind, definitely. Apart from that, the internals are all fairly similar. I'd say the Bretta firing pins are certainly a little bit more not reliable a better design than the Browning's. Not that either of them are going to let you down, but you'll find the Browning firing pins have a tendency of pitting and wearing out a little bit quicker than the Berettas do. I seem to sway into the Beretta camp here, but actually the answer is that I don't really have any beholdenness to either. They both have their positives, they both have their negatives. The Browning has been around a hell of a lot longer than the Beretta in this connotation, and I must admit the Beretta has some of the best Browning in the world. Browning seem to be lacking a little bit behind, but still working on their old school reputation. I don't know which one I'd choose. Wood, wood, let's so have a quick chat about wood. Turkish walnut, also castle walnut, American walnut. In high grade browning, they're a little bit more brittle, but you get a lot more looks for your money, certainly, than the Beretta. Berettas aren't famed for their exotic woodwork, and that's perhaps what lets the Beretta down over the browning is that you'll get a nicer piece if you look at this grade one versus this grade one. This is very, very strong, very, very practical, but it lacks a little bit of the, the, the beauty that is within the, the 525 here. 525, you also get a game scene. You don't get a game scene in the Beretta, but you do get a game scene in the Beretta if you buy a Silver Pigeon Deluxe or a Silver Pigeon 3 or a Silver Pigeon game scene. So actually looks don't matter that much. You can buy extra income, you can buy extra wood for either, so there's not really a comparison there to be had. We're talking about actual physical differences. There is many, in the operational differences, there is many. I mean, I can't really professionally choose a camp to go in, so I'm not going to. But I hope this has been of some help to you. If you've got any questions about the differences between them, please let me know and uh, comments below, and I'll try and help you and answer those. Apart from that, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon.